This lecture covers key aspects of socialization and how it relates to the self in society. Socialization is sometimes referred to as the society within us. It's that process of taking a little baby and turning them into a person. That person is a member of a specific culture and society. There are many key agents of socialization. Some of the most important that we study in sociology are things like your family, where you grow up, your religious community, your school, caregivers and peers, and what goes on in the workplace. Resocialization refers to when one has to learn new norms, values, roles, attitudes, and behaviors. This might occur because you change locations, or it might just be a normal part of the life course. Certainly, there are many changes that occur over your life that require you to take on new roles and learn new norms. Typical examples are becoming a parent, going through retirement, or one that's going to be happening to all of you, hopefully soon, graduation. Theories of socialization tend to be linked to the school of thought known as symbolic interactionism. Cooley and the looking glass self, Mead's observations of the I and the me and the generalized other, and Irving Goffman's roles, front stage, backstage, and stigma are all crucial. Cooley's idea of the looking glass self has three components. In terms of self-evaluation, we imagine how we appear to others. Then we imagine how they judge our appearance. Finally, we develop some feeling, pride, mortification. This is a direct result of what we imagine others' judgment to be. Cooley was a student of George Herbert Mead. Mead gave us the idea of the generalized other. The generalized other is the norm against which we measure ourselves. It's our perception of what the norm should be and how we measure up. Ultimately, we learn our generalized other through play. He gives us different stages of play. Imitation for young children under the age of three, play for children ages three to six, and team games for school age or older children. The self is always involved in a dialogue between the I and the me. The I is the immediate response of the individual to others. It's your spontaneous reaction, or yourself as a subject. The me are the sets of attitudes that you assume. It's what you think the appropriate reaction should be. It's you evaluating yourself as an object. Mead was concerned about the role that mass media, popular culture, and in particular advertising were increasingly playing in the construction of the me. Mead argued that increasingly the generalized other was becoming open to invasion by foreign profit-seeking symbols. Goffman adds to this the idea of dramaturgy, the view that social life is to some degree a series of dramatic performances. We all know the roles we're expected to play and most of us comply with playing them. This is the idea that our shared reality is constructed through this shared performance of reality. For example, the holidays are what they are because we all agree to go through the rituals. For Goffman, the front stage is where the performance actually takes place. There's got to be a setting and then you, the individual, has a personal front. You have equipment, you have things that make your performance convincing. The backstage is the stage, staging area. This is where the mistakes are hidden. You didn't hear all the mistakes I made when I initially recorded these slides. Even though they're not perfect now, you're not seeing the worst ones. Goffman asks, how does playing all these different roles affect our personal psychological state and behavior? Goffman highlights the idea of impression management that we guard against unexpected problems, faux pas, inopportune intrusions, problematic presentations of self by managing our impression. The more engaged we are in a role, the more impression management matters to us. The problem is, how do we manage our impression when our roles are in conflict with each other? One key aspect of socialization that most of us experience is gender socialization. 
Gender norms, roles, and expectations impact most of our lives. In what ways do you think gender norms may benefit you, and in what ways do you think they might be inhibiting your behaviors? Language holds a special place in socialization. Language refers to written, oral, or oral, sign or symbol forms of communication. Linguistic structures are such that people who speak different languages will actually think differently. Language structures how we think because it creates our classification systems. It tells us what linkages, quote unquote, just sound right together. Language is a form of social communication and is critical to socialization. If you don't learn language by a certain age, it's very difficult to teach someone language. Language tends to reflect social structure. For example, gendered adjectives contain assumptions about ability and tendency. Language and culture are intertwined. Language is a central and critical component of culture. The expression lost in translation is used to capture the fact that when you try to translate things culture to culture, some things really just don't translate. There really is no way to speak the same language there. Humor is a good example. Do you have any friends who come from other cultures where their jokes just don't translate and neither do yours to their language? Why is language such a key component of culture? It shapes our ability to think about the abstract. When we talk about concepts, we're using a specific linguistic structure that limits and shapes what we think about. It gives us our concept of time. It gives us the idea of a shared past or a shared future. Without language, we wouldn't be able to express a shared perspective, and people from the same culture will often use the same language to talk about the same types of experiences. It also allows us to work together toward a common goal and to contemplate abstractly how to achieve that goal. Language may also be symbolic. People often use gestures, quick physical references to convey messages. Gestures are unique to culture. What's rude in one culture may be unknown in another, and you'd want to be careful that you inadvertently don't make a rude hand sign. Members of cultures tend to share linkages between images, ideas, and concepts. Take a moment to think about what images or symbols invoke meaning beyond what that image implies for you as an American, or if you come from another culture, compare and contrast your culture to America. How might this tendency facilitate communication? Are there any ways that you can see it as problematic?